Today's installment of My First Hit brings in studio an incredible guest. She has, uh, quite frankly, seen it all. Been there, done that, and shown the world what her talent is about. Singer, DJ, Tomorrow Day is in the house. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Are you well? Super, I'm really good. Oh, thank thank you so much. I'm absolutely brilliant. (laughs) Um, I'm glad that you were asking me earlier about um, this segment and uh, Sampra... Mm. Uh, and how they fit yeah. in because my first hit is something that's very close to my heart yes uh, because the stories behind how the music began how the careers began yes. are always just so incredible yes and and sampra was like oh we have to be a part of this which is why they sponsored this segment um, amazing thank and, you sampra i love your work and outside of that tomorrow you would know the importance of the business of music but we'll get to that yes we'll get yes. to that yes. you are telling me that you slept in your beanie is that how yeah, bad it is in Joburg? <laughs> It is so cold. Like it's not a look. I re- like you. I had to put my beanie and a scarf on when I was in bed last night. My nose. I felt like it had frozen. It was going to fall off. And I just thought this is not a look like for the bedroom. Like it's just not not a vibe. But um, but it's that cold. Like it's that cold. What's happening? <laughs> I, I wonder. I wonder. It must what be, is happening? It, it must be everything that's happening in Cape Town right now. With yeah, the, we've the f- always, <laughs> we always blame Cape Town. It's always Cape Town's fault, Shane. They get a, yeah. I mean, Sorry about that. But yeah, it does happen there first, right? And then it hits us. So like, absolutely. we've got to blame somebody. <laughs> so Tamara, you've been keeping us warm with your music for years. Oh, thank you. It started somewhere. Um, mm. Would you say you were a baby when you got into the industry? Oh, yes, yeah? definitely. How old were you? I was just out of high school. I think I was in my, I, I connected uh, with uh, the people who would sort of break me into the industry when I was just out of high school, basically. I'd, I'd, um, I was like a year out of high school. So I was, I was, I, I thought I was very grown up. Yeah. Well, did you have a plan? Uh, you no, know, after, I, you yeah? know, no, I knew music, eat, right. sleep, drink music. I had been from... Uh, from like, I don't want to, well, I shouldn't have been in clubs at that age, but I was, uh, my, my folks obviously know all of this now, but um, yeah. uh, don't go to clubs unless you're 18. Anyway, um, <laughs> at, at, what, what if you're listening, <laughs> uh, any any club I could get into where they were playing house music yeah. and there were DJs that I could jump up with and do some vocals, like yeah. I was, that was the mission. And this is so in the that 90s, was already, right? uh, It was sort of... Sort of 2000? S- yeah, like yeah. late late nineties. Yeah. I was in I was in high school yeah. and um, yeah. So any chance I got, and then um, and then I went and studied musical theatre at um, what is now Tswane University. Yeah, and um, and I was discovered around that time, and um, I was doing that exact thing, like jumping up with a DJ that I, you know, trying to do some vocals in the club, like. What and was then, that like? Because that still happens today, where people oh, just kind of jam on sets. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, there yeah. any difference? I'm still doing it to this day. <laughs> Is there any difference never now to how it used to be then? Were there egos? Was it easier? Were DJs friendlier? I think you know. Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, I guess now it's just a, a part of my career. At that time, I was, I guess, just hustling any opportunity. So right. it had a very, like, a bit of a different energy. Yeah. Um, but I like the fact that I, I've never stopped doing that same thing, and that I still get joy from that same thing, like that hasn't changed like that feeling of of uh being in a dj box and doing live vocals over dance music like sure. full stop the best thing ever like and at yeah. some stage um you get to work with uh Oskiro and bruce Beatle. yeah wow. so i was literally at a house um in midrand um and i was i teamed up with this dj and we were going to do a, a we had a gig and um, he was playing on on vinyl, and f- at that time everybody was. And um, he said, I, "I found a house where this, you know, is set up, and there's some decks, and like let's go through there." And he, we drove through, and it happened to be the same house where DJ Pepsi lived, and there were some other, you know, kids who were like in that crew that were there. Yeah. And um, he literally came home and found this like white girl singing in his lounge. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he came with bags under his arms, and he was like. Who is this girl <laughs> in my lounge? Like, and I was there just writing some hooks over some yeah. some house tracks, you know, yeah. with this DJ. Um, and then we got chatting, and he was like, "Oh, like, what's the dream? Like, what's your plan?" And I was like, "Oh, I love this music, and I love Masters at Work." And I, and he was like, "Oh, he whipped out a photo album," and he was like, "Oh, here's my brother with, 
Louis Vega yes, and, and Kenny Dove and Kenny Dove yes, and yes. I knew Vinny and Christos. I knew some of the guys from the Pretoria scene. Yes, yes. So like I I had a little I had a little foot in, but I I didn't know who Askido was. I had no clue. I was probably I didn't know what Quieter was. I just knew house music and um, and then from there um, I I got a call and Pepsi called and said come and come and sing at one of my parties. And I jumped up there and did some some freestyle vocals and um, and soon after that he called again and said my brother wants to work with you and yes, I was like this, okay this who's your brother? This brother of mine that you don't know um, who's your brother? Yeah, everybody knows. <laughs> and then uh, I recorded in like the old old Kalawa Studios like when it was still I think it was a toilet and then it became a small <laughs> recording booth and then I watched Kalawa like just expand into this like insane yeah. I mean they built new studios yeah. and, but I. Um, I think I tried my first scarp corp at the back there uh, with with the Kalawa crew at some oh, point. So some they were scop- trying to get me to have the eyeball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like sheep head. Proper. They prepared that and, they and were, you were yeah, in there. Yeah, well, they were there with it, and <laughs> I happened to to get a taste of the experience. You know, yeah. no, and yeah, I jumped into um, the studio that day and freestyled over this track, and that turned out to be my first hit. Like I had no idea because you must understand, I hadn't quite grasped who I was working with. Wow. I hadn't, I didn't know. Yeah. And I was literally in my car driving home from Varsity a couple of months later and we were going through the McDonald's drive through and m- we were listening to, I think it was, I can't remember what radio station, yeah. but, um, and the next thing, there I was on the radio. Like, this, you know? So w- w- that would Tatum Pasta be that song? Yes, that was the song. Imagine me sitting there in varsity and then suddenly realizing like, hey, that that's me. Like, oh, I, I didn't even know the song was out, yo. <laughs> like, I knew nothing. I was oblivious. I'm taking you be- back to that moment Please. right now, Tamara. Let's take you back. That song, by the way, came out about 2016. Yeah, yeah. It actually, I, yeah, it dropped 2016, and it's weird. Only it really blew up on radio like a year later. It was the weirdest thing. Like, it it was released, and there was nothing like crickets. And then, like, literally a year later, it just went boom. Let's like, talk about that it was because mad. I, I want to talk about your mm. feeling around how this music thing works. Because you get into the studio, you make music. Yeah. Um, and you never really know whether a song is going to be a hit or not. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you do drop a song and there's crickets, does it change your feeling around the song? Like, what does it do? I don't know. You know, the thing is, um, if it it was different because it was, I, I wrote the song uh, for, for Zintle mm. and it was her song featuring myself. Um, and she was the, the force behind releasing that song. And, you know, she was very involved with the vision um, it was very much her baby, you know, on, on that level. And um, and once I'd I'd finished doing my bits, I sort of it was I I sort of it was she 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 took the reins and handled everything, sure. you know. So I wasn't really very involved with that that next phase of the release, which is quite a big, it's a big part of of, yeah. of you know making getting a song out there to yeah. to your listeners. It's a huge part. Oh, I, we did do like a PR run together. I was very involved with that part of it. We did lots of radio and yeah. some TV performances. But there's this there's this big push that needs to happen. And she was obviously very involved with that. Um, so I sort of had gotten on with getting there, getting on with my life yeah. on the side. And then all of a sudden, boom. Plus it was, you know, her song. And yeah. I, um, yeah, and I didn't hear much about it. And then suddenly, like all of a sardine, it was just like, it just blew. Um, and I, but that's really cool though because uh, you know another thing about the song this was one of those songs where i i wrote it and and thought it was great then they finished they well after they sent me a finished version sure. which i was saying to just now changed quite a lot right from what you recorded on. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 um uh just in terms of the instrumentation you yeah. know and um i was like oh this is great like i i really loved it um but i i didn't get a I, you know, I didn't. I didn't have this. Um, you know, 
I don't know how to explain, but I had no idea what was coming. Like I really yeah. didn't anticipate it. Um, and off it went. And like I said, I was here with my life and she was, Z was there doing the magic. And then next thing, like out of nowhere, it, it was blew just up. suddenly, and then it just didn't stop for like years. Like what, it was what have crazy. you learned just based on that and many other experiences tomorrow? What have you learned about how people consume music? Uh, and how songs grow, become big, etc. With I, all yeah. the years that you have. I think the trajectory of the of a successful song doesn't always look the same. You know, mm. like sometimes things, things blow up in different ways. Um, it can be the way I just described. It could be instant. It can it cannot pop off on radio, but build from like a on a street, yes. you know, level. Yes. In, you know, which is also an amazing way to see your music a uh, 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 break you yeah. know uh, is to have it like grow from like the Organically. clubs yeah. oh that's a beautiful thing if yeah. that ever happens to you that's so great um, there are all these different ways it can happen um, and there's some songs that get pushed out and maybe it's just not the right time or the you know it, it, you know and it doesn't mean it isn't great music um, it's just you know they, there are all these factors yeah so with that like, being said um, mm. how then does that inform where Tamara Day is going next with all the years that you've been behind the microphone on mm. stage, on the radio and television with hit songs and mm. everything that you know. Mm. What then do you do next as Tamara Day going forward? You become a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> why? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? No, you know what it is? Yeah. I, 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 I got my education in the DJ box. I, I from from... When I was 17 years old, I was in DJ boxes. Like, with, uh, if I started to list the DJs I've shared that space with, I've been blessed to share that space with. It's it's crazy. Sure. Um, uh, across dance genres, everything from drum and bass to house techno, uh, uh, you know, quite so, you name it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've I've literally lived in DJ boxes my whole life and been surrounded by DJs playing the most phenomenal music and getting. My ear has been so well trained, let me tell you, yeah. over the years because of what I've been blessed to be exposed to um, and what I've been blessed to witness um, in terms of that dynamic between the DJ and a crowd. And I was always the vocal on that. And now you're know? you, you, you you know, the DJ behind a, it. Yeah, it just yeah. got to a point where like, I needed to elevate and this was the most authentic and made the most right. sense. Like, I, I Also, I, for me personally, there were some sounds I haven't been hearing out there. And I've been feeling like if I'm not hearing it, I need to be playing it myself. So what is that? What do you play now? When tomorrow day gets on the deck, what does uh, she play? Okay, well, I'm, a, I'm multi-genre, sure. uh, as I am with the vocals. Yeah. Um, but um, at the moment, my the main my, the styles I'm most focused on are Tech House and Afro Tech. Beautiful. Um, I'm weaving in some vocals there as well, um, which is really exciting, especially with the Afro Tech. Oh, it's such a, that's such a beautiful sound. Yeah to do vo live vocals over. Um, I sometimes have an instrument as well, but it just depends. But really, really loving exploring those two genres. I have an Afro Tech Night that I've just launched. Um, it's oh, my wow. own event and um, I do it at Bad Manners in Parkhurst. It's called Oda Ambaso, which means Ode to the Bass. Wow. And we, yeah, we got a once a month a night there. And uh, just if you follow me on socials, you'll, you'll see it. But um, if you're an Afro Tech lover, this is, it's super sexy, it's super bass driven, it's very, 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 very nice music. So come check it out. And a really cool little scene that we're building there in a crowd that, I mean, there's people are hungry for other sounds sure. as well. And so it's, it's really cool to be on that side of it. But yeah, so, but I also play a bit of new disco mm. um, and some techno, melodic techno as well. I mean, I'm just in you're my element, guys. Yeah. And, and, and you've got I'm all this experience. I'm literally living my absolute best life right now. And then yeah. here's the other beautiful thing about it. When you book me to come say, okay, Tamara, come and do a 30-minute club club set, sure. right? You're going to get a specific sound. It's it's my original music. It's my hits, whatever. Blah, blah. But within the DJ space, what's so beautiful is I can sing over Afrotech. I'm singing over house, over, yeah. over melodic techno, over... I'm making music now in these styles. I'm going to be releasing some Afrotech. I'm going to be releasing some tech house. It's literally like I've just opened Pandora's box. And what's so beautiful is I just feel like I've gone also straight back to my roots. Yeah, because it's everything Because this is that's where it's always been for me. Yeah, exactly. But I was the girl like, literally dancing all night, 
and, and, through and, now, the night. and now you've gone back to and being now I'm that back, girl I'm in back, the I'm DJ that girl. box. <laughs> I'm still that girl. I love it, I love and it, I love it. And it's so good. Like, I love I'm it. So I just, my life is very rich right now, musically. I, yeah. I cannot even tell you what I, I love it's it unlocked you. for me. And oh. I, I love the fact that you've so gotten beautiful. a new sense, uh, almost like a renaissance, a oh. rebirth. So um, I wish we had more time tomorrow. So do I, because don't even get me started. We, we, we're <laughs> going to get uh, those songs that you're going to bring out, coming yes. straight to 947, and we'll oh, yes. jam them like we've been jamming Colors and many others. Yes. Thank you so much for coming through thank tomorrow. Thank you for having Absolute me. Absolute pleasure. And thank you to Sempra for you know being behind the segment um and for everything that they do to support artists that's what it is yeah it is tomorrow day live on 947 my first hit brought to you by sampra and uh, naturally we're all about supporting our artists and uh, we love the beat so yes we also pay for play Both flavor on 947